the Hawk Conservancy Trust, which is based in Hampshire in the south of England. I'm going to be touring today to find out a little bit more about what they do here and what visitors can expect to see. Okay, the Hawk Conservancy Trust is a visitor attraction and charity. Our mission is the conservation of birds of prey. And we hope that by people coming to visit the visitor attraction, we get lots and lots of people who will come and love and enjoy and support birds of prey and help in our mission to conserve them by watching our wonderful displays and coming to see our beautiful birds. It is a first visitor to the Conservancy. What could they expect during a day visit? We're a full day out, um, which sometimes people find surprising. Um, and the jewel in our crown is really our displays. There's three flying displays, each in different arenas with different birds. So the first display on our su summer timetable is in a savannah arena where we recreate scenes of Africa with African birds and music and special effects to really make you feel what it would be like if you were watching African birds um, in, in their um, natural environment. The other two displays, we have a display in a wildflower meadow uh, where birds fly across the meadow and a variety of different birds, kites, um, vultures, uh, we fly a falcon and that really demonstrates the breadth of skills that our birds have. Um, and then the third display, woodland owls, that one really brings you close to our owls and that one's brilliant for owl lovers. You get really close and you get to see some of our brilliant owls and it's in a beautiful woodland arena. So um, lots of shade and enclosed area and really recreates what it would be like for owls in the wild. Spot some youngsters who were obviously seem to be having a, an experience uh, with one of the uh, handlers. Which allows those people who just want to get a little bit closer to our birds and understand and then learn a little bit more about them. And we offer a great range of them, uh, half day experiences, full day experiences, and we offer them for uh, children and slightly older children. So we do a children's owl experience and a young falconer's experience. We do photographic experiences. So for those people who really want an opportunity to you know, use their love of photography to get close to our birds and take photos. Um, and there's lots of opportunities to get close to them in flight, have them fly to your arm, and also to take photos of the bird on a post in portrait as well. One of these experiences for a full day would cost £165.50. That includes lunch. Um, they're small groups, making sure that you really get the maximum opportunity to, to meet our birds and our team and ask questions and understand more about the birds that you're, you're meeting. Um, and a half day experience is £87.50. So overseas we predominantly work with vultures and the threats that they face, which is primarily poisoning and a variety of other threats, the most threatened species of bird on the planet. On site, we've got the National Bird of Prey Hospital, where we take in injured and orphaned birds of prey, treat them, care for them, rehabilitate them with the aim of releasing them back into the wild. And we do a variety of research projects as well with birds of prey, which involves monitoring populations, um, on-site data that comes into the hospital, and a variety of research. And education is also a key part of us trying to uh, reach the mission of the conservation of birds of prey, because we really need people to understand their threats, to come to love them as much as we do, to support our mission and engage in in the conservation of this group of birds. After speaking with Louise, I spoke with Ryan Stevens about the conservation work he has been involved with in Africa. The Hawk Conservancy Trust works closely uh, with a few different species in Africa with the preservation of these amazing birds in the wild. Uh, one of the biggest problems that has uh, encountered vultures across many parts of Africa is the um, poaching of elephant tusk and the problems arising from that. Unfortunately poachers are not particularly keen on vultures. Um, they 
Uh, of course, vultures do an incredible job of locating carcasses. When they fly really high, they use their amazing eyesight to scan and look for uh, where things have died or the activities of other animals, uh, the hunt maybe, that would lead them to an easy meal. What vultures do is nature's dustbin men. You know, they're clearing up, so that's what they do best. Unfortunately, if a poacher has killed uh, an elephant and has taken the tusk, um, the vultures are obviously starting to mass in the sky above and unfortunately it's acting as very much a signal, a, a red flag in the sky that there's some activity going on underneath. Um, the poachers know that they're kind of being given away by vultures. The game guards authorities are looking for vultures circling in the sky and um, they will follow circling vultures um, leading them sometimes to what a poacher is doing. Um, because the poachers know this, unfortunately, um, really sadly, they will lace uh, carcasses with deadly granular poisons to kill all the subsequent uh, vultures that come to feed on that carcass the next time they're not there. So, in effect, not only are they, they killing the elephants, but they're also killing the vast populations of, of vultures. Very much so, yeah, definitely. Um, it's causing a knock-on effect, and it won't just be vultures at the carcass. You know, there will be other animals, there will be other birds of prey, a lions, you know, all of the ecosystem will, can be very much affected by what's happening in this very isolated situation of a poacher poisoning a carcass. What things are you doing, you know, when you actually get out to Africa? So. Um, in terms of the poaching crisis, it's actually a, a really difficult thing because, of course, once these vultures have been have consumed that meat infected with these deadly poisons, you know, really nasty stuff. Fortunately for those vultures, it's too late. So what the, uh, the Hawk Conservancy Trust has developed uh, in recent times is something called poison response action. And basically they consist of poison response kits, which we train and arm uh, rangers and game guards up with these uh, kits. If they come across a carcass, which has obviously um, had the effect of poachers and there's made dead vultures all around it, these kits are designed for shutting the area down, taking forensic ev evidence to aid um, with all of uh, trying to, you know, um, control this problem uh, with other incidences, but also to shut the area down, to stop subsequent vultures coming in to, to feed and other animals coming in to feed on this obviously poison carcass. It's very much about damage limitation, um, trying to control the problem. Um, yeah, and it's, it's definitely um, a big, big challenge. But of course, one of the other ways you're trying to support the, the wildlife, you know, out in Africa is, is you've got a breeding program running here, I understand. Yes, definitely. So because these, you know, species like African white-backed vultures, uh, Af white-headed vultures, hooded vultures, these critically endangered species that you see in Africa, you know, they are declining so heavily now and, you know, really starting to disappear. Um, we amazingly have a, a fantastic breeding program with these species here in captivity. You know, having these bloodlines in captivity is really important. If the worst happens and we see them disappear from, from Africa, you know, we can use captive stock for future reintroduction programs if we set up a viable, viable breeding program. Um, one of the ladies that works for us, um, Jane, she actually coordinates the International Stud Book for white bat vultures, um, which is an amazing, amazing accolade to have. And we have an incredibly successful um, uh, success rate with this species, which is fantastic. And this is this is providing a, a really big, or is a bigger gene pool that you can yeah, actually get. Definitely. So we work with collections all across the world, putting new bloodlines together, creating uh, viable breeding stock. And then, you know, later down the line, these, the generations, the offspring will, you know, if we need to, we can use them for these reintroduction programs. So yeah, getting as many of them breeding in captivity as possible, and we're having fantastic success. And that all happens here in Hampshire? Yes, definitely. You wouldn't believe it, would you? Yeah. So as a visitor, if you come in to see us, um, you'll see these birds um, as part of these incredibly important breeding programs. I mean, at the moment, we've got uh, a very young uh, white bat vulture called Eunice, who was born this year, that's on, on, on show to visitors. And again, just being up close and be able to see these amazing birds is so important. Not only are they working here on conservation projects for the UK, 
but they're also working on really important conservation projects for vultures in Africa.